Welcome back to Jesus Now Eschatology. I'm Pastor Andy. Today I want to take a look at Revelation chapter 2 and the letter to the church in Thyatira, specifically focusing in on this woman Jezebel that the church in Thyatira has tolerated. She calls herself a prophetess, which I find very interesting because that word could be sort of brought into being a pastor in terms of modern usage of the word. Somebody who speaks on God's behalf uh, is called biblically a prophet, but in our time and in our context, that person would be called a pastor. And there's a couple of very interesting examples in our culture uh, of pastors who are women who have led the people of God astray, even as the book of Revelation says. So we're going to take a look at these two examples. And this is really, if either of these two people are watching this, this is a call to repentance and a call to change uh, the way back to God's way and back to his word. And if you want to know what that way is, you're going to need to watch this whole video. But I want to share with you, the rest of you who are watching, why this is a dangerous teaching coming from these women and what this is indicative of in our culture and in the conversation about God as it's being had by some of these voices that we really need to watch out for and avoid. And so I don't dive into this topic with a lot of, uh, a lot of great enthusiasm and, and joy. It's actually more of a cautionary tale for us and, and really a, a word of caution to all of us, I think, about uh, this woman. Uh, Revelation 22. We're going to try this whiteboard style today, guys. We'll see how this goes. Um, I know your works to the church in Thyatira. Sorry, Revelation 2, my mistake. I know your works, your love and faith and servants and patient endurance and that you, your, your latter works exceed the first. But I have this against you that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her onto a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her I will throw into great tribulation, unless they repent of her works. And I will strike her children dead, and all the churches will know that I am he who searches mind and heart, and I will give to each of you according to your works. But to the rest of you in Thyatira who do not hold this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say I do not lay on any other burden. Okay, this is actually super interesting. And also I want to do a video that contrasts what Revelation says about the deep things of Satan and the deep things of God, because the Bible actually includes something about both of those. But this is super interesting to me. Um, really sad. If this is to be fulfilled in literal terms, there's going to be some death. Uh, and that's going to show to people that that God is real and that he does test mind and heart and searches mind and heart. Um, and that's that's sad. Um, both of these both of these women in the current times, both of them have children. And this should be a serious warning um, to anyone who would be calling themselves a prophetess and leading God's people into sexual immorality. That's the bottom line. If this is happening, we need to pay attention to what the Bible says. So we're going to take a look at a few other verses. We're going to take a look at a few linkages. And I hope that this video actually gets into... Um, looking at this attitude. Why is this warned about in Revelation chapter 2? I want to take a look at an interview um, about Nadia on the Rich Roll podcast, and we're going to take a look at two different clips. Here we go. Um, the difference is that holiness is about connection too. like moments of holiness are about being deeply connected um, to yourself or to the moment or to the divine or to another person to me holiness is always about connection to and purity is always about separation from it's like separating ourselves from our desires but more than that separating ourselves from the people who are impure uh -huh. and um so holiness is about connection to and purity is about separation from, but we pretend they're interchangeable because purity is just easier to regulate than holiness. Okay, I've got a couple problems with this right out the gate. Um, this idea of connection to others, what she's specifically talking about in purity culture is sexual connection. And connecting oneself to someone else sexually is what the Bible calls sexual immorality if they're not married, right? Titus 2.11. Uh, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us 
that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, okay? So Nadia Boltz Weber teaches that, in her view, um, holiness is about connecting to others. Even, yes, in, in terms of if the immediate context of this is about purity culture, she's talking about sexual connection. And she, I, I would add, uh, 1 Corinthians 6.18, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. So no, it is not a greater connection to holiness. Um, actually, it's a greater connection to evil if one connects oneself to this kind of true self that they're talking about, this kind of um, sexually immoral self. That's what the Bible calls the old nature or the old Adam that needs to be actually put to death. Therefore, what is earthly in you would include that. Okay, so I want to take you down uh, just a short journey on um, Nadia here. So she just a few, I believe it, days before this interview, actually, no, days after this interview, she presents a statue of a golden uh, part of a woman's anatomy that they're going to talk about to the coordinator, I believe, of this sh uh, makers conference. But let me let me play you the clip. I got to know, I, you got to explain to me what's going on with this purity ring thing, melting down these purity rings and, yeah, and making yeah. a golden vagina sculpture. It's not like, golden. Is, <laughs> just to say it's not golden. People started what freaking out about that. Um, why, why that part of it? Oh, because of the story where uh, people melted their jewelry into a golden calf and worshipped oh, it. Right. And yes. so people are like, it's or idolatry. Mm. Um, so I was thinking... Nadia, if you think it might be idolatry and other people are calling it idolatry, maybe you should stop and think, is this idolatry? More swords into plowshares, you know, which is another Bible verse where you uh -huh. take something that was meant for harm and you um, repurpose it into something healing for the community. So, um, I mean, purity rings were this thing that was really big in what's called the purity culture, where... Um, girls were asked to sort of sign a, a card pledging that they would not have sex before marriage. And then they'd put a ring on their finger, um, a, which was called a purity ring, which mm -hmm. was this indication that she was not available to have sex with until uh, her wedding night. Uh, and this would happen to girls when they were quite young, you know. So in the crosshairs of Nadia Boltzweber is purity culture, which is the culture within the church that around trying to keep oneself unstained from the world. That's actually biblical. Um, to keep oneself unstained from the world is what we're told to do. And so when the world is jumping into sexual immorality, as the church, as God's people, we are to be keeping ourselves unstained from that. And I know that that's not a very popular voice, but that's what the Bible says. However, the ELCA background that Nadia Boltz Weber comes from would deny the scriptural authority that tells us these things. And in kind of this framework that she's building, she's calling this a very kind of oppressive type of thing. Now, this whole purity ring, purity, um, she said it, I mean, she melted a bunch of purity rings into a, a vagina. I feel like we at least need to uh, understand um, what actually happened in facts, in the facts of this story. Okay, so she collected these purity rings. She turned them into this sculpture. And uh, how did she do it? Well, she, she had people mail them in and she's very uh, emotional about this and how healing this was. And she basically made this promise to this lady named Gloria um, Steinem. And she collected these purity rings, right? And she went to a jeweler and had the jeweler make this sculpture. And, and various people wrote in and said, hey, this is why I'm giving this up. This, I, I don't like this, um, this ring. And so they, they create this statue and, um, and they give it to, um, to Gloria. Okay. Long story short, what's the problem? The problem is that Nadia is engaged in war against what God tells us to do. And, and her, she's written a number of books. One of her books is called Shameless. That book has gotten some attention, but if the Bible says be pure, if the Bible says keep yourself you know, away from sexual immorality. And if the Bible says things like there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. And yes, that's written in the New Testament. Um, 
It's written in the Bible. We should be listening to that, Nadia. Uh, we need to be repenting of the works of darkness and having nothing to do with them and leaving them behind. And right now, at least, Nadia, you're engaged with war against purity culture that the Bible is, is building up. Now, I understand there's a lot of harm being done in churches uh, surrounding guilt, uh, especially when somebody has not been pure. I understand there's a lot of guilt and shame uh, culture. That needs to go. Uh, we need to keep ourselves under the cross and under the blood of Jesus. And and yet, it's th the reality isn't that we need to paint over the sin and say call it something other than sin. The reality is we need to be open about our testimonies and sharing them openly and talking about the forgiveness of sin. That's the, where the power is. The Bible says in the end that, that the true believers overcome Satan by the word of of their testimony and the blood of the lamb. Those two things coupled are very, very powerful, especially when you're talking about um, this particular sin. When someone's willing to be open and vulnerable with others and share about what they've been through and apply the blood of Jesus to that situation, other people can be helped and other people can be uh, brought to Jesus. But I agree that we need to do away with the shame culture around it. But the way to get rid of the shame culture is not to just embrace the sin. The way to get rid of the shame culture is to embrace the good, which is the testimony in the blood of the lamb. It's not to redefine the terms and make them uh, as though a sin was acceptable to God. Okay. Uh, Isaiah 520. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. God is not a moral relativist. He is a moral absolutist. And he defines the terms on what is moral and amoral or immoral. Okay. So followers of Nadia, watch out because this is sounding an awful lot like a prophetess who is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and, sacri and food, eat food sacrificed to idols. I would say that the eating food sacrificed to idols has a little bit more to do with the next um, example. But the leading God's people into sexual immorality and really embracing this um, other culture of wickedness is something we need to really be careful of, guys. Okay, because this is modern, modern cultural Christianity. Okay, this is not true Christianity. This is cultural Christianity. But when people look at true Christianity, they say, hey, why is it not looking like cultural Christianity? And then they think true Christianity is what's false. And this cultural Christianity is what's true. It's inverted. No, it's not. This is this is what's false. This is bad teaching. This is false teaching. Okay, this this stuff from Nadia, bad. All right, let's go on. Uh, now I want to make one quick link. This is an interesting link. The ELCA has something to do with both of these. The ELCA stands for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Now Nadia, I, I, I have seen, it was an ELCA pastor. She was widely celebrated. I remember at one point when I was um, kind of working for an ELCA church, I remember hearing about Nadia and then thinking, what is going on uh, with, with Nadia? Okay, so the background there is interesting, but also interesting, the second example here was a woman who became a pastor who was invited to speak by the ELCA at a church in Minneapolis. Okay, that's pretty interesting. There's a little bit of a connection here with the ELCA. And what is the ELCA doing promoting this kind of bad teaching? Let's take a look at our second example, Nicole Mitchell. Uh, she was recently uh, featured on Dr. Phil, which is how I had heard about her. Somebody had shared a clip of Dr. Phil's interview. And she basically, t the headline is, I went viral as the pastor turned stripper. Glad you're so proud of that. Yeah, no, I'm not. Um, so without diving into this world of complete immorality, uh, Nicole has become a OnlyFans creator. And she basically makes money um, online being a sex worker. Let's just say it for what it is. In one of her interviews, she says, sex and money combined is my favorite thing in the world. Now, that does not sound like a very Christian perspective or at least a Jesus perspective from somebody who was at least a pastor, okay? Jesus had a lot to say about keep yourself free from the love of money. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, right? Uh, so sex and money combined being your favorite thing in the world might be a little bit of a red flag, Nicole, if Jesus said um, you cannot serve two masters. You will be devoted to the one and hate the other. Um, and you cannot 
serve both God and money. So if your favorite thing in the world is sex and money, then be very careful um, that you're that that's not what you're worshiping. That's not what you're serving, because that means that you would be devoted to that and hating the other. Okay. 2019. Here's a quote. That's about all I'm going to give you because I don't want to even play any of these clips. I I even just I, I can't even deal with this, honestly. Like, this I, this is the kind of stuff I don't want to even touch with a 10-foot pole. Let alone even saying her name on this show. Is I feel like it, it, it's really, it, I pray God will give you wisdom into these things, okay? In 2019, I did my first nude photo shoot. I cried after that because I had never felt more holy or sacred or true than I did in that moment. Why would a pastor say that her truest self is the flesh? The very thing the Bible talks about, warns us about, she's jettisoned the life of the spirit and doubled down on the life of the flesh. That's that's troubling. Okay, she has three kids, ages 7, 9, and 12, she says in this interview, and Dr. Phil says, would you be okay with your daughter doing this? And she says, yeah. Okay, so, so this is sounding an awful lot like um, someone whose conscience has been a bit seared. Uh, someone who's really not caring anymore about the church and the church people. Now, Nicole has a, a, a immediate family as well. And she says that they've all abandoned her because they don't agree with her, what she's doing, what she stands for. Uh, and that's, she says, I'm very sad about that. I'm very sad about that as I make $100,000 a month creating this type of content. Right. Not really buying it. But the interesting link here to the idolatry is the thing that we mentioned a while back on this show about sacred prostitution. Now, in old old times um there was this idea in temples that because this sexually immoral thing is happening in the temple it's like it's a holy act um it's as though it wasn't um evil because clearly uh we're in a holy place and it's sanctioned and so because this idol in this temple false god by the way uh is um is, is sanctioning this sexual act. It's a holy act. And so that is very interesting. And if you look deeper at what her teaching is about this, it's that it's holy. It's sacred. And she talks about the people that she's connected to this thing and talks about how healing it is for those people. And I can't help but see this obvious link to Jezebel in that. Okay, so now we're going to go to Jezebel. Okay, Jezebel from the Bible. According to the biblical narrative, this is Wikipedia. Thanks, Wikipedia. Uh, Jezebel and her husband purged the, this cult of, of God, right? The true God. They even make this sick name. So that Baal and Asherah worship could be institutionalized. Almost speaking of Jezebel in a positive light. But Jezebel um, was killing the Lord's prophets. 1 Kings 18. Obadiah took a hundred of God's prophets and hid them in caves in two groups of 50 and provide them with food and water. Okay, so Jezebel was a bad bad news. Um, but the Asherah worship that she instituted in the Baal worship included sacred prostitution. That's pretty interesting because this is the same stuff that we've been linking to in a lot of the other videos about the modern paganist movement and the Libertas worship and sort of the, the trace histories of that in this old style worship of Asherah, okay? Sacred prostitution was practiced by the priestesses and of this religious system. That's having a bit of a renaissance right now. And I think it's very consequential. I think it's very, very, very consequential. And that's why this, there's a link in Revelation. First Kings 21, 25, there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. There, that, there's an interesting verse, isn't it? Isn't it interesting? I hadn't even just realized that until now, how selling oneself to work wickedness reminds me so much of an OnlyFans creator who literally sells their own photos online. Um, and even Dr. Phil noticed this and he said, hey, your kids have internet access, like, are you concerned that they will see all this online? And she basically says, no, I would encourage them. Pretty sick. Flee from sexual immorality. Nicole, this is your chance. This is your opportunity. Um, whether or not you are this person embodying um, Jezebel, 
um, I can tell you that right now you're leading God's people into sexual immorality and to this idea of idolatry. The eating of food sacrificed to idols is a, it's an allegiance to an idol or a false God in this God that you're creating who is not the God of the Bible. This God that you're creating who is okay with this and this God who's, you know, the holiest and sacred and true thing you can do is post nude photos of yourself. That's a false God. Okay, Nicole, you need to repent. This is not good. And you're leading people people away. And I care about your children. And if this verse is to be fulfilled, um, that would be very troubling, I would think, to a mother. Um, and it's God who does this. And people are, are going to be thrown onto a sickbed. And it's going to be bad, okay? So how about, how about this, ladies? I know that you don't want to listen to the Bible when it says to not be a pastor, um, and yet both of you have decided in your heart to go against that and do that anyway. Um, and so I'm not necessarily super optimistic about you listening to even the very Bible that I've shared with you, but here, how about this? For the sake of your kids, listen to the word of God on this. And I don't know how or who or if even this is, is going to be fulfilled in my lifetime, but I see this very clear warning to the church in Thyatira. Just as Jezebel in the Bible meets a grisly, grisly end because of her wickedness and because of what she did, killing the prophets of God, killing righteous people, leading people into sexual immorality and false God worship, so also you, yes, you, are doing this. You're leading people into falsehood and to, into sexual immorality and into greater enslavement while you promise them freedom. That's the absolute irony of all of this goddess worship within our culture that's this kind of liberty to do anything culture. It's that we have come under the false notion that somehow government can sanction something that God has disallowed or that God has commanded us to abstain from and that somehow because the government says it's okay, then somehow it's okay for us. Do you see that it's actually all a religious system? because it's leading people to that type of worship, the worship of self, the worship of sexual freedom and this liberty ideal. I can't really summarize any better than what Nadia says here though. It's an absolute inversion of the facts. Holiness is about connection to. Purity is about separation from. That's her perspective on God. To connect oneself with the world is the holiest thing then that one could do. Hear then the words of James chapter 4. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives us more grace. There's grace enough today to repent, to get back on track. This is still the day of good news. And those who follow in these footsteps of Jezebel, this is still the day to repent. And I think about the book of Hosea and Gomer and how God tells Hosea to marry this woman of adultery, Gomer. And she continues to go after other men after the marriage and it's just bad, right? But how Hosea is told to go and redeem her and buy her back. That's what Jesus did for his bride. He bought us back from sin. We were quite literally the whore who went after other gods, who, who went into sin, who went into sexual immorality, Jesus bought us back with his precious blood on the cross. He spent what needed to be spent so that we could be free, free to serve him. And yet some people would use that freedom as a license for more immorality. And watch out for those people, friends, because they're teaching our youth. They're teaching our adults and they are themselves 
um, these agents of currently agents of wickedness. Nadia, Nicole, repent. The kingdom of heaven is near. The day of Christ is at hand. Repent today.